GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we've got a show for you today. First topic we're going over is our power rankings for this Friday. We always do Friday power rankings here on the channel. So uh, I was going to do that today, of course, and that'll be the first three segments. After that, we'll be going over the Rickwood game last night in Alabama, Giants for Cardinals, and what went on. And then after that, going over some news around the league. I haven't done that little segment in a while, but there was some there was some pretty significant news uh, yesterday that went over, just but that wasn't big enough for a full segment by itself. So I just want to talk about them all together. So yeah, uh, before we do all that, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read on the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show and really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show for today. All right, so as I said, we are going to be starting off with our first topic here, which is going to be about the power rankings for baseball. Uh, obviously, I do this every Friday here, uh, giving my thoughts on each team and uh, what goes on there and uh, what goes on with them. So yeah. Uh, let's start off with uh, number one. So we're going to be doing in the first segment one to nine, then we'll be doing 10 to 20, and then 21 to 30. So yeah, we'll be going over that, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so first off, at number one, we have a new team here, which is the Baltimore Orioles. So before this, I had the Yankees at number one for, I think, maybe two or three weeks in a row, but I did end up changing it up to the Orioles this week. It's always been very close with the Yankees and Orioles. Both these teams are very, very close within each other, and it's always been a decision of which team you're going to put in. But I decided today that it would be the Orioles instead of the Yankees. Now, the reason I did decide that was because the Orioles did just beat the Yankees in a series in the Bronx. The Orioles won the series 2-1, to one, and I thought I'd, I thought there, that was the rationale to have it as, you know, the Orioles just beat the Yankees in their own ballpark. As much as it's very close, the Orioles win the, get it for this week, and they are, for right now, the best team in the MLB. Again, really, it's been them and the Yankees, top two for a significant amount of time now, and I'm going to be sticking with that, as I do have the Yankees at number two. But like I said, these two teams go hand-in-hand, hand, both in the same division, both just absolutely elite and incredible. And again, one and two, if you put the Orioles one and the Yankees two, Yankees one, Orioles two, I wouldn't be mad. I'm just putting Orioles one this week because they did just beat the Yankees in a series, so I thought it made the most sense. But again, both these teams are absolutely incredible, and either one at number one would be perfectly fine with me. Number three, I have here the first NL team on our list, the Philadelphia Phillies. I have had the Phillies as our number, as the number one team uh, in the National League for a significant amount of time now, and that not does not change this week. The Phillies are a really, really great team. Um, I mean, they're fantastic. They have an amazing lineup. The pitching staff is absolutely incredible, loaded with depth. I talked about I talked about yesterday the pitcher power ranks from MLB. They had two pitchers on there, including the number one pitcher of the MLB this year so far, Ranger Suarez. So their pitching staff is absolutely incredible. The lineup is great, and yeah, just a very, very talented team. And there's a lot, uh, a lot going right for them right now. And uh, they are my number one team in the NL currently, and number three team in the MLB so far. So yeah, there we go. Number four here, I have the Cleveland Guardians. Now, again, as I've talked about a lot, the Guardians have been the biggest surprise of the entire year, and they just haven't slowed down still. I mean, they're still an amazing team, still high up here, and still here at number four. I mean, they're absolutely incredible. I talked I talked yesterday in my first segment about Stephen Kwan and the team all together, so if you want to go over that, uh, go please check it out. It's in the GSMC uh, baseball playlist, so I just go click over there, and you'll see Stephen Kwan from yesterday. But yeah, this team is absolutely incredible. There are some holes within it, like the pitching staff, which obviously had a big injury come down at the start of the year with Shane Beaver. But the lineup has been so, so great this year. Of course, you have Quan, but you also have guys like Josh Naylor, who's done incredible. Jose Ramirez, who's a stud, obviously. Um, some other young players who have really performed well as well. And even though Shane Beaver is out for the start, in, out for the rotation, you still do have some talented players there, like a Tristan McKenzie. Gavin Williams also got hurt, which is unfortunate. I'm not sure what his timeline is. And, you know, you have Lo you have uh, Logan Allen, who's done well. So you still have some uh, Xavion Curry, who's there. So you still have some good players in this rotation. It's just it is a little less of depth than you'd expect from a team in this position. But the line has been absolutely great. And they're also in a very tough division, which you'll see in the, with another team in this list in the, in the top 10, which they're from their division. So, yeah, I mean, this team has done an amazing job this year been the surprise of the entire first half and yeah number here at number four as, as uh, the third best american league team and the fourth best team in the mlb right now number five we have the second nl team which is of course the dodgers 
The Dodgers, of course, used to be a little higher on this list, but they did have some unfortunate injuries with the Mookie Betts and Yoshinobu Yamamoto going down for a significant time. And even before that, I did have them a little lower on the list just because they weren't playing as well. They do have some holes in their lineup that I think people are kind of forgetting about and just don't want to really think about because it's the Dodgers. But the offense, their offense in the outfield hasn't been the greatest. And, you know, again, the Yamamoto and Betts injuries are only going to hurt them. Walker Buehler just went on the injured list, which should be a which should be, you know, a big thing. But Clayton Kershaw is potentially coming back soon. You just had Bobby Miller come back, so that's good at least. So they're getting reinforcements. But Mookie and Yamamoto going down is really tough for you guys right now. And you're lacking a lot of depth, and I don't think Dodgers fans really want to think about it. But it's true. You're lacking a lot of depth right now. And uh, I'd definitely be worried. There are some there are some things that I don't really like. I wouldn't really like from a Dodgers fan. And they're just hoping they get, uh, you know, smoothed out by the trade deadline. But right now, without Betsy Yamamoto, we're going to, it's going to be very interesting to watch how they play. And because of those injuries, I did have to move them down to five. I debated putting them even lower, but I think my common sense uh, won out saying, you know, it's still the Dodgers. They still have Otani. They still have Freeman. They still have all these stars in the team. So uh, five was the lowest I could put them here. Number six, we have another AL Central team, the Kansas City Royals. I've talked about my love for this Royals team numerous times on the show, and I'll continue to do it. I think this Royals team is so, so great. The pitching staff is absolutely incredible. Seth Lugo, Cole Reagans, uh, Michael Walker, Brady Singer, great guys there. Lugo is right now, I'd say, high in Cy Young voting. And just, yeah, other than that, also the lineup has a lot of good pieces as well. Of course, you have Salvador Perez, who's had an amazing season. Bobby Wood Jr. as a franchise superstar. Some other younger guys who are starting to play better, like Vinny Plascantino. Michael Garcia, you also have um, someone I'm forgetting, who is escaping my mind right now. But... Uh, also them. Uh, so, MJ Melendez, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry. But, yeah, there's a lot of nice pieces on this Royals team, even without the pitching rotation. But, man, is that rotation great. And, overall, this team is just really, really fantastic. They do have some problems in the bullpen, which need to be fixed. But I'm confident that they'll be fixed by the trade deadline. So, yeah, if I'm a, if I'm a Royals fan, that's really what I'm hoping. But, overall, still the team is pretty fantastic. And, yeah, a lot to like for a Royals fan. And they should even get better by the trade deadline. It'll be interesting to see if they do go all in. But yeah, this team is really fantastic. Finally breaking out. I mean, they were horrible for so long. It's it's nice that I guess the you know labors of being horrible are finally paying off because you got Bobby Wood Jr. You were in the position to draft him. But yeah, this team is fantastic, and I'm very interested to see what happens with them for the rest of the year. So uh, definitely we'll be watching them for uh, you know for the rest of this year. Like I said, number seven, we have the next NL team here, the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, the Brewers also have uh, some, you know, things you don't like about the team, like the pitching rotation, but they have just continued winning. I mean, hey, you've had, you have Snoop Dogg coming to your games right now as a Brewers fan, so that seems pretty nice. I mean, it show, shows you all what they're doing. You have not watched Snoop Dogg's commentary yet um, for the Brewers. It was really incredible, so uh, it was really great. So I, I uh, suggest you go watch it. Just look up Snoop Dogg Brewers. I'm sure you'll find it. But going after that, I mean, this team has a lot of talented young hitters on this team. On the team, Jackson Churio, you have William Contreras, of course, veterans like Christian Yelich, Reese Hoskins, who really hold the lineup together. After that, the bullpen is really great, even without Devin Williams. Abdur Naribe is doing a, doing a nice job there. Um, Trevor McGill is also doing a good job. So a lot of talented players on this Brewers team have done a really great job um, still being competitive, even after who they lost this offseason with Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns. So props to them. Props to how well they've done and overall have just done a really fantastic job as a team this year and have just been really, really great. I was not very high on them going into the year, but they have proven me wrong, proven a lot of people wrong, and have done a really, really great job. So good for them. Uh, next here at number eight, we have the next NL team, a team that has fallen in recent weeks because of injuries and just underperformance, the, the Atlanta Braves. Now, I don't think I have, I think I had the Braves nine last week, so this is a little bit higher, but some of the bats have started to get it going, mainly Austin Riley, who's done very well, hit a big uh, game, game-winning home run a few days ago. That was really nice for him. But yeah, still this team, they're reeling from the injuries of Acuna and Strider, so that really is going to affect them the rest of the year. But Marcelo Zun is really holding the offense down right now. You, of course, have so many talented players like a Matt Olson, like an Austin Riley, like um, an Orlando Arcia, an Ozzy Albies. Um, Adam Duvall is solid, but overall, it's just, again, the Acuna and Schrader injuries are really going to bug them for the rest of the year, so uh, we'll have to see how they deal with that, but Kalanick and Duvall isn't a horrible tandem, I guess, but we'll have to see, but 
yeah, still a lot, again, still a lot of talented players on this team. They will definitely have to add before the trade deadline, though, if they want to be more competitive. And that's what I'll be watching as a Braves fan. As a, as a, if you're a Braves fan and as a baseball fan, I'll be watching. And finally, number nine here, we have the AL, AL West leading Seattle Mariners. I love this Mariners team. There's so many great young pitchers that are just truly incredible that really make up this team. Also, for the lineup, you also have guys like Mitch Garver, like Ohari Polanco, who have not found it yet, but are still very talented. J.P. Crawford, Julio Rodriguez are there as well. Cal Raleigh's great. So, overall, this Mariners team is really, really fantastic. And they deserve this number nine spot. Both the Astros and the Rangers have been very underwhelming this year, and the Mariners took that and ran with it. And are now leading the AL West for a good two weeks. So, they've been a great team. Have a lot going for them right now. This pitching staff is really, really great. And it will be very exciting to watch them for the rest of the year. All right, so that was our first segment here, talking about the 1-9 to nine segment of our power rankings. Moving into our second segment, which is going to be talking about the 10-20 to 20 part of our power rankings here. We'll be going over that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? 